Hello, I'm Marcus Louth and welcome to the latest edition of the UFO Insight Podcast, where we examine all things UFOs and aliens, conspiracies and mysteries, and all aspects of the paranormal. Okay, today we'll look at some of the apparent UFO and extraterrestrial bases that are claimed to exist right here on Earth. And as we might imagine, we should treat these claims with an appropriate pinch of salt. They are, however, extremely intriguing, and if any of the following is proven to be even partially true, it would be reality shattering for all of us. Perhaps the best place to start would be with some of the world's most famous mountains, many of which, as we might imagine, are also UFO hotspots. Without a doubt, one of the strangest and indeed most thought-provoking of these secret mountainous bases is that they are said to exist within Mount Hayes in Alaska. Not only are there a plethora of UFO encounters on record throughout the state of Alaska, but according to apparent whistleblower Pat Price, who arrived at his conclusions through remote viewing, an extraterrestrial base exists deep within the ancient mountain. What's more, a specific program is operated out of the mountain that revolves around thought transfers, with an overall objective to control the thoughts and actions of the human population. Even more concerning, if you accept for a moment the claims are true, these alien entities look the same as human beings, so much so that they can, and often do, walk among the human population without being detected. Of course, how true or accurate Price's claims may or not be remains open to debate. Now at this point, it is worth quickly examining another apparent underground facility also in Alaska. And while it isn't a mountain, it is without a doubt one of the most intriguing and thought-provoking alleged locations on record. According to several researchers, an ancient black pyramid exists deep in the Alaskan wilderness, a structure that is said to contain a joint human extraterrestrial domain. It appears that the claims of this ancient structure date back to a news report in May 1992 on Channel 13 Anchorage regarding a freak discovery by three scientists as they monitored apparent nuclear tests by the Chinese government. Part of this monitoring involved using data from sensitive seismic equipment, which they had set up approximately 50 miles away from Mount McKinley, and that would measure the shock waves that would be sent around the planet following the nuclear tests. Inadvertently, however, the data very much suggested to the scientists that a huge cavernous space existed within close proximity to where they were working, and even more remarkable, within this space was a huge pyramid-shaped structure. One person who witnessed the news report was a former counterintelligence officer based in Alaska, Doug Mutchler. What captured his attention most was that he had previously studied military maps of the region and had been more than perplexed and intrigued by a significant section of the map that appeared blocked off, with the words, this area not surveyed to date, written on it. An area that was close to where the apparent underground structure was said to be. So intrigued was Mutchler that he even visited the station and requested a copy of the tape of the news item. He was, though, told that not only did a tape of the broadcast not exist, but that no such broadcast had even taken place. It was as he was leaving the station that an apparent employee approached him. He had heard his conversation and confirmed to him that the broadcast he had seen was real and had aired. However, not long after, two apparent government officials had arrived and confiscated the tape. Much lower remained quiet of the incident for two decades before finally speaking to researcher and investigator Lisa Malton Howe in 2012, whose investigation would lead to further information being revealed. It was put forward that the structure was indeed a pyramid shape and was made of an ancient black stone and so, ultimately, was referred to as the Black Pyramid. One whistleblower would state that the ancient building was over 500 feet high. The United States government kept the building under constant watch, even setting up a facility at its base from where they studied and carried out various experiments. Another witness, who claimed his father was an electrical engineer and had worked at the facility, claimed that the structure was an ancient power plant and that the military was studying alternative energy sources associated with it. The following year, in 2013, another whistleblower, Bruce Pearson, who claimed his father had worked at the ancient structure for the military, stated that the pyramid was not built by humans, although he stopped short of saying who the builders were. It has also been noted by researchers that this area of Alaska has more than its fair share of UFO sightings, leading to many suggestions that the alleged underground structure was some kind of ancient alien base. 
So, when in 2017, another whistleblower came forward to Howe, claiming she had seen the structure by remote viewing, her account resonated somewhat with what was already known. According to this anonymous woman, she claimed the entrance into the facility was nothing more than a discreet doorway no bigger than a shed. Going through this led to a long staircase that stretched deep under the ground, eventually leading to an elevator that took you even deeper. After stepping out of this elevator, the woman found herself inside a large room with multiple flashing lights, panels and buttons, as well as many different screens. She also saw a huge window, and when she looked out of this window, she could see the huge black pyramid structure on the other side. Perhaps of more interest, she claims to also see much movement and activity taking place around the structure. However, the figures she could see were humanoid, but definitely not human. If we switch our attention south to the state of California, we found Mount Shasta, another ancient mountain that not only has many legends attached to its name, but also has multiple UFO encounters, including claims of a secret alien base hidden deep inside, accessed by the many cave systems at the base of the mountain. Several of these sightings have even been captured on video, with one sighting in the early 2000s appearing to show a UFO emerge from a portal directly over the top of the mountain. Perhaps even more curious, there have been several reports of strange creatures with glowing eyes that also exist in these cave systems. One of the strangest encounters of recent times involved a young boy who went missing for several hours while camping with his grandparents near the base of the mountain. Although he was ultimately discovered unharmed and uninjured, he had a disturbing account of where he had been and what had happened. He stated that he was taken deep into the mountain by an entity he referred to as a robot grandma. He was held in a large room which he recalled was full of spiders, as well as a large number of guns. Even stranger and unsettling, the young child claimed that this other grandma told him he had been placed in his mother's womb by extraterrestrials from elsewhere in the universe. As we might imagine, most people, including the boy's parents, put these claims down to the confused recall of a young child who had found himself in the middle of a traumatic situation. That was until the grandmother herself stated several days later that she had discovered a strange bite mark, like that of a spider on the back of her neck. What's more, she had been suffering from strange dreams of being trapped in a cave-like room, being guarded by a bizarre creature with red eyes. Another mountain on America's west coast is Mount Adams in the state of Washington, yet another location that is awash with UFO sightings and conspiracies, not least that an extraterrestrial base exists deep inside it. And we might remind ourselves that what is largely agreed to be the sighting that kick-started the start of the modern UFO era, that of Kenneth Arnold, unfolded near Mount Adams. Furthermore, it appeared that the UFOs witnessed by Arnold disappeared somewhere near the mountain itself. What is particularly interesting about this is in the summer of 2017, several attendees at the Enlightened Contact with Extraterrestrial Intelligence Conference reported seeing some kind of artificial opening appear near the top of the mountain. Could this have been similar to the opening to the one that might have appeared during the Kenneth Arnold sighting, one which the UFOs that he witnessed disappeared into? As well as the world's mountains, there are many claims of alien bases existing under the water in various coastal locations around the planet. And while we will almost certainly return to these in a future podcast for a more in-depth examination, it is worth mentioning some of them briefly here. For example, the southwest and northeast coasts of the United Kingdom have multiple UFO sightings each year, and both locations are home to rumblings of an extraterrestrial base somewhere beneath the waves. In the case of the North East, the North Sea has a long history of UFO activity, with many residents of the coastal towns in the region claiming to have seen strange objects and lights hovering over the water. What's more, there are several encounters on record of military jets encountering strange, fast-moving objects over the water off the east coast of England. In more recent times, several UFO sightings have been reported claiming to show UFOs entering and leaving the North Atlantic waters off the coast of southwest England. According to one UFO reporting website, on consecutive days in July 2020, a local resident of the Devon region witnessed a disc-like object exit the water one afternoon, while also seeing a similarly shaped craft appear out of nowhere the following day and quickly disappear beneath the water. 
We will stay in the United Kingdom for a moment longer to examine briefly the claims of UFO activity in and around the regions of the Welsh coast, and specifically, as far as alleged underwater bases are concerned, strange activity and bizarre lights off the coast of Puffin Island. Many residents of the region have reported seeing strange bright objects entering and leaving the water. And what's more, several alien abductees from the area have made claims of being taken to underwater bases off the Welsh coast. It is also very much worth our time examining the apparent artificial structure discovered in the Baltic Sea, which, relatively speaking, is only a stone's throw away from the North Sea. And furthermore, the Baltic Sea is another body of water that has an impressive collection of UFO activity over and under the waves, with at least one military deployment in 2014 taking place in the region due to unknown underwater activity. The discovery of an apparent artificial structure came to light in 2016, when a Millennium Falcon type anomaly was found at the seabed. As we might imagine, the discovery has been dismissed as a naturally occurring formation. However, many who have viewed it are more than impressed with the apparent purposeful markings and precisely straight lines and cuts that appear in it. It isn't just the seas of Europe that have claims of underwater alien activity though. The many lakes of the Americas are equally as active, and it is there we will turn our attention next. Many of the lakes of North America are also rife with UFO activity, and without a doubt one of the strangest such lakes is Lake Ontario. Not only is the region around the ancient waterway awash with UFO sightings, but there are several strange disappearances of both individuals and entire planes around the water. We could say much the same for the stretch of Lake Erie that runs through Ohio. There are multiple reports of strange glowing discs that suddenly dive into the water and disappear. If we move our attention to the southern continent, then there are two particular bodies of water that are of interest to us. Lake Titicaca is one of the world's oldest lakes, and certainly one of the highest. It also, like others mentioned above, has a long and rich history with UFOs and strange entities. And what's more, from an ancient astronaut's perspective, much of the ancient mythology and creation stories revolve around this particular body of water. There have even been several videos that have appeared online, appearing to show large, solid black objects moving below the water, with one particular video shot by Italian tourists causing waves for a time in the UFO community. Perhaps one of the most active countries in terms of UFOs is Puerto Rico, and that is much the same with sightings off the northeastern coast. Of even more interest are the apparent findings of researcher and journalist George Martin, he would claim that he had uncovered evidence of artificial structures running for several miles out to sea to under the ground in various cities on the mainland. He claimed he had unveiled these tunnel-like structures using images from the NQAA satellite. What is particularly interesting about these claims is one of the cities that one of these alleged tunnels stretched out to, the city of Ponce, had experienced several strange noises coming from under the city in the late 1980s. Residents would describe these noises as machine-like, as if heavy-duty drilling was taking place below them. The noises would cease as suddenly as they began before any investigations could take place. If there are underwater alien bases in several locations around the planet, then we might expect details of them to show up in claims of alien abduction. And while they might not be as well known as some, there are several intriguing cases that provide very heavy hints of just such an aquatic domain and some that outright state so. We might, for example, look briefly at one of the most famous cases of alien abduction of them all, that of Betty and Barney Hill. While on the surface, this appears to be a standard alien abduction on a lonely road in New Hampshire, when we examine some of the transcriptions of the hypnotic regression sessions, we find some potentially revealing details. During one exchange, while describing the moment after being taken on board the strange craft, Betty would recall under hypnosis that it was entering the water. Another well-known alien abductee is Betty Andreasen, who would claim that her abduction encounters had been happening for decades going back to her childhood. One specific case, she would claim, occurred in 1950. After strange entities appeared in her room and transported her to her presumed spacecraft, she was taken and placed inside a wheel-like vehicle. This would launch from the main ship under some kind of remote or artificial control and plummet into the ocean. She would soon find herself entering some kind of strange and magnificent underwater facility. 
And what's more, while she was there, she was taken to a strange room that she would recall as a museum of time. In this room were several glass-like containers, each of which contained a human being from a different era of history. Yet another case of alien abduction that received relatively widespread attention is that of Linda Cortiel. In a case that was investigated by veteran UFO investigator and researcher Bud Hopkins, Cortiel would claim that she was abducted right out of her downtown New York apartment on the evening of November 30th, 1989. What was particularly intriguing about the Cortiel case, unbeknown to Cortiel and Hopkins when she reported the abduction and began regression, was that two security guards had witnessed the abduction taking place. Known as Richard and Dan, they were working as drivers and security for the then Secretary General of the United Nations on the evening in question. They were driving along a road near the East River, under the Brooklyn Bridge, below Cortiel's apartment when their car's engine suddenly died. It was as they stepped out of the vehicle to see what the problem might be that they witnessed a woman floating through the air. Even more bizarre, they could see three strange figures floating with her. They would keep watching the strange scene until Cortiel and the three creatures were inside a dish-shaped craft that hovered a little way from the Tower of Apartments. It then moved away and came screeching toward the surface of the East River. Within seconds, it had vanished below the water. What makes the testimony of the two security guards even more compelling is that before they even made contact with Hopkins, Cortiel had made statements under hypnotic regression of the craft she was on board coming to a sudden stop under the water. What's more, through a window in the otherworldly vehicle, she could clearly see soft drink bottles and other garbage on the bed of the river, which we might assume was somewhere under the East River. A particularly intriguing recall of apparent alien abduction can be found in the book The Alien Jigsaw by abductee Katharina Wilson. In it, she would describe being in a strange craft that would make sharp turns before heading downward at a very steep angle. She soon realised there was water all around them. She eventually realised they had entered some kind of underwater tunnel or tube. Anna Jameson's encounters are also of interest to us here. She would speak of abduction events involving underwater tunnels and of crafts entering the water in her book, Connections. She would state, for example, that during one encounter, she could recall being on a craft that seemingly entered the water in front of an approaching ocean liner. She would further recall travelling underneath the huge vessel before entering a long tunnel. This tube had soft walls, which very well could have been a perception of water around her. Unfortunately, that is all she would recall of this particular incident. There are also other encounters that provide much more in-depth details of these apparent alien abductions to underwater bases. The abduction of Orlando George Ferraudi from an Argentinian beach in 1956 is perhaps a good example. After being approached by a seven-foot humanoid in a tight-fitting shiny suit, he was taken on board what he believed was a spacecraft. However, instead of venturing into outer space to another planet, it instead took him beneath the waters. He would eventually find himself in a giant underwater dome that he was informed was a base to recondition ships. What's more, Faraday was told that this alien presence had been there for thousands of years, seemingly performing experiments on all manner of life, and that Earth was, essentially, a zoo planet. A similar encounter occurred in January 1979 on a quiet road in Miami, Florida, when Filiberto Cardenas was taken on board a disc-like craft via a strange beam in front of his friend and family, while he attempted to see why his car had suddenly stopped. His friend would report him missing to the police, and he was eventually discovered over 10 miles away in the middle of a busy highway. Only when he underwent hypnotic regression months later did he begin to discover what had taken place. He would reveal that after arriving on board the craft, which contained several strange humanoid figures, he was strapped into a smaller vehicle. This then launched out of the main craft and descended into the cold waters below. Presumably somewhere off the coast of Florida, the smaller craft would then enter some kind of underwater tunnel before eventually coming to a stop in a large hangar. According to what he was told by his hosts, this was just one of many such aquatic facilities based all over the planet. That there is a connection then between UFO sightings, alien abductions and the deep depths of the various bodies of water all over the planet is surely without a doubt. 
what that connection means and indeed what it might be in truth remains very much open to debate. Without a doubt, if there is any location around the world that has claims of secret bases and facilities, it is the continent of Antarctica, which is perhaps no better place to wrap up our look at such claims. Not only are there many apparent UFO sightings in this part of the world, but it is also home to numerous conspiracies, including top secret facilities containing extraterrestrial entities. Perhaps one of the most intriguing of these was that the Third Reich managed to establish top secret bases in Antarctica during and after the Second World War. And what's more, some of these claims, which we should of course treat with a pinch of salt, state that these bases were established with the cooperation of an extraterrestrial race. There have been many alleged anomalous regions of the continent highlighted, particularly in the internet age, perhaps specifically with the arrival of Google Earth. There have been several videos appear online throughout the 2000s that claim to show a crashed disc-like object, or others that have even claimed to have shown several bizarre elongated crafts lined up on an icy surface. Of course, such videos should definitely be treated with a pinch of salt, and while many, if not most, are intriguing but nothing more, others do, on occasion, demand further attention. One of the most recent of these claims surfaced on several online platforms in January 2020, courtesy of a YouTube channel. They were claimed to have spotted an area that suggested a structure that was almost 2,000 feet tall and that would be large enough to fit six football fields inside. The footage was viewed almost 100,000 times in the first few weeks of its release. One viewer would comment on how strange it was that every country in the world had an interest in taking over Antarctica, and yet no country seemed to claim it. Many researchers also point to the one-time project Iceworm, a secret program from the Cold War era that saw the United States looking to build an intricate tunnel system under the ice sheets of Greenland. From there, they could store and move medium-range missiles, which would obviously be pointed at the former Soviet Union. Might it be, some researchers ask, that such projects did not remain in the Cold War days, but are in action in Antarctica today? And if so, where are these weapons pointing now? Ultimately, the conspiracies around Antarctica require a full episode in their own right, and we will almost certainly return to them in the future. The alleged bases we have examined here today are only some of the ones that are said to exist around the planet. There are many more claims of these secret facilities on record than we could perhaps imagine. And while we might suspect that many of these claims are ultimately unfounded, it is not that much of a stretch of the imagination to think that some will be more credible than others, whether or not there is an extraterrestrial connection. The fact is, there are undoubtedly top secret facilities all over the Earth, and by their very nature, they attract all manner of claims and conspiracies. However, for the most part, we often find that there are partial and twisted truths to many of these claims, often only coming to light years, sometimes decades later. Might we find that this will be the case with just some of the alleged bases with UFO and alien connections? As always, it certainly gives us a lot of food for thought, and a lot to contemplate. For now though, I will simply thank you for joining me, and be sure to leave any thoughts in the comments, and check out the links for further reading on some of the cases and theories we have been discussing here today. Remember to subscribe to our channel, and follow us on social media to keep up to date on future podcasts, articles and videos, and if there is anything you wish us to discuss on future podcast episodes, then just get in touch at marcus at ufoinsight.com. Until next time, goodbye, and take care. Thank you.